Hello YouTube, we are on the real programming channel. It is about HTML and CSS. My name is Andre. This is our 58 lesson. Read you. We will talk about the sheets they are not just for desktop browser anymore. And there's actually another reason you might want to have multiple style files. Let's say you want to tailor your pages style to the type of device your page is being displayed on desktop, laptops, tablets, smartphones or even printed version of your pages. Well, to do that, there is a media attribute you can add there to the link element that lets you use only the style files that are appropriate for your device. Let's look at an example. The media attribute allows you to specify the type of device the style sheet is for. You specify the type of device by creating a media query, which is matched with the device. And a new device that has a weight of almost 480 pixels. Here is our query specifies an appearance with the screen as opposed to say a printed or 3D glasses or a braille reader. Likewise, we could create a query that matches the device if it is a printer like this. The long print CSS file is only going to be used if the media type is print, which means we are viewing it on a printer. There are a variety of properties that you can use in your queries, like main, main device weight, mean max device weight, which we use just in the orientation of the display, landscape or portrait, to name just a few, and keep in mind you can add as many link tags to your HTML as necessary to cover all the devices you need to. Add media queries right into your CSS. There is another way to target your CSS to devices with specific appropriate rather than use media queries in link text. You can also use them right in your CSS. Here is an example. Use the media link forward by your query and then put all the rules that apply to device matching this query with curly brackets. So, there's rules will be used for your screen by then 480 pixels, then rules will be used of the screen is 480 pixels or less, and the rules will be used if you're printing the page. All other rules apply to all pages because they are contained with the 8 media rule. So, the way this works, only the CSS rules that are specific to a media type are included in an 8 media rule. All the rules that are common to all the media types are included in the CSS file below the 8 media rules, so that way you don't have any unnecessarily repeated rules. And when a browser loads the page and determines to the media acquires the rules that appropriate for the page and ignores and any that don't match. Media queries are not supported by Internet Explorer 8 and earlier. Media queries are an area of, of, of effective development by the standards group. So keep your eyes and your volume. Best practice for targeting devices. Exercise. Look at the devices below alone with their specs. Can you design a set of media queries to target each device? Your answer, answer here as should be. There are no dumb questions. They are pretty cool, so I can set up different style sheets for different devices. Yes, you can set up several style sheets and then link to them all in your HTML. It's the browser's job to the Use the right style sheet based on the media type and the characteristic you're specifying your media query. Are there other media appropriate uh, besides, uh, besides this max device weight and min device weight? Yes, there are quite a few, including max and min weight. Different from device weight, is you'll see shortly max and min height orientation color 
Spect Radio and uh, more. Check out the CSS Free Media Aquarius specification for all details. HTTP for www.freeorg tr CSS Free Media Aquarius and have first mobile web for you. It is better to use link or add media to specify different CSS rules for different media types and characteristics. Either one will work, but notice that if you put all your rules in one file and split them up using add media rules, your CSS could get pretty big by using different link elements. For different media types, you can keep your CSS organized in different files depending on the media type. So if your CSS files are fairly large, we recommend using link elements to specify different style sheets. Exercise. In your chapter 9 long folder, you will find long print CSS. Open up long HTML in the chapter 9 long folder and add a new link to the this style sheet for the media type print. Make sure you also add the attribute media screen to the link element that links to long CSS so you have one style sheet for the screen and one for the printer. Then save, reload the page and choose the browser print option. I run to the printer to see the result. Here is the new link you need to add to your long HTML file. Here is the printed version. You are totally changed how the page looks when it's printed using CSS. That structure versus presentation thing is really painful. Optional printer required not included in the book. <laughs> Exercise next. The max device with um, and win device with. Media characteristics are dependent on the actual screen size of the device and uh, not the weight of your browser window. What if you are more concerned with the size of the browser? Well, you can use the max weight and min weight properties instead, with uh, represent the maximum and minimum weight of the browser window itself, not the screen size. Let's see how this works. In your chapter 9 long folder, you'll find long mobile CSS. Open up your long HTML file again and change the link elements in the head of the document to look like this. Now reload the long HTML in your browser. Make sure the browser window is nice and big. You should see the long page is normal. Next, make your browser window narrow, less than 480 pixels, what happens, what happens to the long page? Do you notice a difference? Describe below what happens when you make your web page narrow and load the page. Why is this version of the page better for mobile browsers? Make sure you're using a modern browser. If you're using Internet Explorer, that means Internet Explorer 9 Plus. While it points, CSS uses a box model to control how elements are displayed. Boxes consist of the content area and optional pageant border and margin. The content area contains the content of the elements. The padding is used to create visual space around the content area. The border surrounds the padding content and provides a way to visually separate the content. The margin surrounds the border padding and content and loss and space to be added between the element and other elements. Padding, border, and margin are all optional. An element's background will show under the content and the padding, but not under the margin. Padding and margin size can be set in pixels or present percentage. Border weight can be set in the pixels or by using the keywords in medium weight. There are eight different styles for borders, including solid, dash to dot, and then reach. For merging, padding, or the border, CSS provides appropriates for setting all the side top, right, bottom, left at once, or it allows them to be set independently. Use the border radius property to create rounded corners on an element with a border. Use uh, the line heat property 
to add a space between lines of text, you can place an image in the background of an element with the background image property. Use the background position and background repeat properties uh, to set the position and till and behavior of the background image. Use the class attribute of elements that you want to start together as a group. Use the ID attribute to give an element a unique name. You can also use the ID attribute to provide a unique style for an element. There should only be one element in the page with a given ID. You can select elements by their ID using the ID selector, for example, as my favorite ID. An element can have one, only one ID, but it can belong to many classes. You can use more than one star sheet in your stack. If two star sheets have uh, conflicted property definitions, the star sheet that is lost in the HTML file will receive a, a preference. You can target devices by using media queries in your link element for or the add media rule in your CSS. HTML cross exercise you're really expanding your HTML and CSS skills. Strengthen those neural connections by doing a crossword. All the answers come from this chapter. Next exercise. Solution. See if you can uh, identify the padding, bar, and margins of the paragraph. Mark all the padding of the margins left, right, top, and bottom. Next exercise. Solution. If uh, you look at the guarantee paragraph, it's supposed to look in its uh, final form. It has an italic serif font, font a greater line height than the rest of the page. And if you are looking really close, great text. You can add the new properties anywhere in the rule, we added them, or add the tab. HTML cross solution. And uh, with their spec solution. And the next solution, if a last solution. Make sure you're using modern browser. If you're using Internet Explorer, that means Internet Explorer 9 Plus. Advanced Web Construction, Chapter 9 Diffs and Spans. We'll talk about this in the next lesson. This is our 58th lesson is over. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Please put like, share with friends, comment, eat bananas, chocolate, nuts, drink more water. For the effective work of our brains. Bye.